All right, this is a topic I've actually kind of wanted to talk about for a little bit now, so I'm kind of going to unload on it, and it's video game review scores. I've seen a bunch of people go, yo, games are art, and you can't put a score on art. You, you, can't, you can't just judge art like that. And I've seen, like, game journalists do these big, long posts about, oh, oh, woe is us, how terrible it is to put review scores on games, because games are so far beyond that. And then, and then there's these horrible companies that are using these Metacritic review scores to withhold bonuses from their employees. Oh, woe is us, look at the evil of Metacritic. And Metacritic just wants you to believe they're nothing more than a tool. Alright, I get there's some weird nuances to how Metacritic, like, arranges its scores and stuff, but for the most part, yeah, no, Metacritic is a tool, and that's actually a relatively logical thing to do. I mean, you want to... The idea is you want to encourage your team to make a good game. It, it kind of... That one kind of backfires. You're trying to encourage your team to make a good game. How do you tell if a game is good? The only way to tell is from the scores of professional reviewers. That's what would tell you if something is good. And you can't just take one reviewer's word, so you use an average. That, that makes sense. But, yeah, there's some flaws there, which I mostly blame on the fact that reviewers are fucking incompetent a lot of the time. Please quit passing the blame off to Metacritic. And, yes... I actually support review scores. I'm sorry, if movies can be scored, because they frequently are, games should be too. Look, I get that there's a lot more. Obviously, I get there's a lot more to what makes a game that just is it good or is it bad. But there's some people where that's all they want. I actually know a guy who actually asks me repeatedly, so is this game good or is it just complete shit? Yes, th that's his metric. Good or complete shit. Nothing in between. Now, there's a shocking number of people who think like that, which is somewhat problematic, but what the fuck ever. The point is, look, here's a scenario. You're in a GameStop. You see a game you've never seen before. It looks intriguing, but you don't want to risk spending money on a piece of crap. So what do you do? You pull out your phone. You look up Metacritic. You look at the score and use that to judge, is this a complete piece of crap? Or could this possibly be a good game, a hidden gem, or something like that? Not everyone has time to read a full-fledged review. They, they do want it simplified to just, is this game any good? And I agree, yes, that's a bit of a shame. There is, there is more to it. But can you not answer that question? I mean, I've come up with sometimes where I've had a hard time answering it, but I can still squeak out a score. Personally, I don't think review scores are the problem. I think the problem is the out of 10 rating scale, which is completely borked. We've wrecked it, which is actually the reason I use the out of 5 rating scale. I I'm completely serious. I used to use the out of 10 rating scale if you're willing to go through a bunch of pop-ups and shit and probably a spyware. I did have... I forget if it was on Angel Fire or Tripod, but I had an old website that might still be out there called Fruity Jello Gaming. I had a hard time coming up with a good gelatinous-based name for my stuff. Um, if you look that up, I used the out of 10 rating system back then. And guess what? I gave everything an 8 out of 10. A 3.5 out of 5 sounds a lot less ridiculous than 8 out of 10. See, so it's not just about the, re the viewers. It's about me as well. We all screw up with with the out of 10 rating system. See, here's the problem. What do you rate an average game? What do you rate a mediocre game? A game that a game that isn't bad but it isn't good. A game that you could definitely enjoy if you really liked one of the characters or were just a huge fan of the genre, wanted just another entry in it. Maybe there was some little kooky twist that made it slightly intriguing to you, but it's not enough to give a full recommendation to. What do you score that game? What is an average game? A lot of people will tell you that an average game is a 5 out of 10. But when we see a 5 out of 10, we go, that game is crap. That game is shit. Fuck that game. 6 out of 10 gets that kind of gets that kind of reception. But at the same time, there are other reviewers who will tell you that a 7 out of 10 is what they give their games because they grade it like like a rating system, like a like a grading scale. So a 7 out of 10 would be like a C. How do you tell which system reviewers are using? I swear, I swear, sometimes reviewers just flip-flop 
depending upon the feedback they get. Oh, this game scored too high. Well, a 7 out of 10 just means it's mediocre. Hey, you scored this game too low. How dare you? Hey, a 5 out of 10 does not mean a bad game. It just means it's average, all right? Average is not bad, you simpletons. <laughs> Yo, you've seen it. I've seen it. I swear they do this shit. I swear they change their rating scale. But more than that, if we're rating it like, like grades on papers, um... Yeah, a lot of people's parents weren't so cool with C's. C's weren't seen as average. C's were seen as pretty much bad. You were supposed to be aiming for A's, but you usually wound up with B's, and B's were okay. So that explains why a lot of people, if it gets lower than an 8 out of 10, they get suspicious. That would explain why I couldn't help but give a lot of games an 8 out of 10. Because I think they scored a B on my grading system. I shouldn't be a teacher. Um, public school systems. So, yeah, that that system doesn't work. And similarly, 10 out of 10. Who uses a 10 out of 10? If you do that, you're kind of implying the game's perfect, aren't you? And then people go, yo, nothing's perfect, which is true. Nothing is perfect. So the 10 out of 10 just sounds completely fake or ridiculous. So reviewers wind up having to give things like a 9 out of 10 or a 9.5 out of 10 as as their highest score. And then people are like, well, what would it have to do to get a 10 out of 10? And, you know, a 5 out of 5 doesn't sound nearly as ridiculous. A 3 out of 5 doesn't sound so bad. That, that's the thing. On That's why I use the out of 5 rating scale. Because an average game, which most games are, you could say the average game is pretty average. Uh, I give the average game a 3 out of 5, which I think perfectly conveys my message. I'm not calling it bad. I'm not calling it good. I'm not recommending it. And I'm not saying to avoid it. It's very much a, well, if this looks interesting, you have nothing to risk from playing it. It's okay. You can get enjoyment from it. It's, it's average. It's okay. Yo, that, that's the main reason I use the out of five rating scale at the same time. A five out of five doesn't sound completely ludicrous. That isn't implying that it's perfect, or at least we don't perceive it like that, because there's only five numbers. And who's going to give something a 4.9 out of five? I think I might have once. Did I do that? I know that was what I was going to give Jack X. Either way, um, yo, five out of five doesn't sound that ridiculous. So that's why I use the out of five rating scale. One, crap. Two, subpar. You could play it, you could enjoy it, but literally any other entry in the genre is probably better than this one. Three, average. Okay, not bad, not great. Four, good. A good example of the genre. You're a fan of the genre? I do recommend this. It, it is like the first part where I would say this is a legit recommendation that I could put my stamp on and feel bad if I disappointed someone. Five out of five. Oh my god, get this game. I don't care if you don't like the genre or the series give this one a chance it's special this is kind of a must own i have a friend who says that that's that feels like too big of a leap from okay to good from not recommended but not not recommended to great but i, I to actually recommended but i don't think so i think that actually feels about right which is why i use it and i use the decimal points to try to suss out where in the middle things go. And yeah, most of the games I review are 3.5 out of 5s. I have some friends that give me crap about my 3.5 out of 5s. I wouldn't have a single fucking problem changing the name of my show to the 3.5 out of 5 show. Because that's what I do. It, if you think about it, it makes sense. Alright, the average game is average. The main focus of my show is to give a little bit more recognition to games that are generally getting bashed. That means it wouldn't be good enough to get a good review score, but the bad review scores definitely feel too low. There's usually, yo, it's pretty average, but there's this one hook that people aren't looking enough into. That is frequently what, like, almost every game on this damn show is. It makes sense, yo. I, I, why would I waste my time reviewing a 3 out of 5? So, yeah, 3.5 out of 5 is the majority of why I review, and I have no qualms with that. And again, I have some friends who are like, why are you thinking, y'all? But well, fuck you. Fuck you. No, no. 3.5 out of 5. All day, every day. What? It makes sense. So that's that's my opinion 
on review scores. I do not think they're bad. I do think they're somewhat necessary. Oh, in fact, they are necessary to me because they keep me grounded. Did you watch my uh, Gels game archives on All-Star Fighter? Yeah, that's a good example of why I need review scores because I get really enthusiastic about the games I like. And again, if I'm, pr if I'm going go through the hassle of making an episode based on it. Seriously, you tried to do game reviews yourself? Editing's kind of a bitch. So if I'm going to go through the hassle of editing together an episode with the footage and all that, I'm probably either really like or really dislike the game to some degree, and so I'll wind up getting way overly enthusiastic about it. And it can be easy to forget that I just listed a laundry list of flaws with this game because I just get so super excited about the things I like. So, reminding myself what score did I feel this game deserves brings me back to reality. I go, oh yeah, that's right, it's only a 3.5 out of 5 because of this, this, and this. So, for me, personally, I need them because they're an anchor to prevent me from going completely cuckoo nutty and sounding like I'm praising every game to the high heavens. <laughs> so, there, there that, that's my opinion on review scores. I don't think they're evil. I just think the out of 10 system is completely broken. And that's not even getting into conspiracies about reviewers getting paid off and stuff, which, oh, we could do a whole episode on the mechanics of how that works, because it's a little more than we paid you to do a good review. Okay, fine, I'll do it now. It's a little more than we paid you to do a good review, okay? Like, because here's the thing. A lot of games these days are, are Western. They're local. So game developers can invite you to their place or come to your place to show off their game and give you an exclusive scoop. And when you meet the developers, you immediately want to be a lot, a lot nicer to them. Because now they're not just some nameless, faceless corporate entity that you can bash mercilessly. They're your bros. You hung out. You had a few beers. You played some games. They showed you what you they were working on. You joked around. It humanizes them. As such, you legitimately feel bad bashing their game if they do a bad job on it. But at the same time, there's the flip side of it where if a company doesn't do that, you feel so much more comfortable with bashing the crap out of their game because you don't know them. You don't care about them. Who the fuck are they? They made some game and I don't like it. Fuck them. <laughs> you know, so that... Yeah, that's a whole other kettle of fish. Anyway, this is Gel. I've rambled for long enough. It says I'm running out of disk space on this computer. See ya.